This video is about anterior cervical decompressions and fusions, and I'm going to discuss a little bit about the when and the why. Most of the time when your neck hurts, it's the back of the neck. Why is it that most surgeries are done on the front of the neck? Well, the cervical disc is actually very close to the front, and also in the front there are few structures in the path blocking the surgeon from reaching the disc. Only the skin needs to be cut, and the underlying structures can gently be swept aside. That's not true in the back. In the back, you have the large muscles that hold up the head. Once those muscles are cut, they can be very painful, and they may need long periods of recovery and rehab. In fact, those muscles, once cut, may never completely heal. The cervical spine is composed of seven vertebral bodies. The first two vertebral bodies are unique. They're called the atlas and the axis, and they form a complex that allows you to rotate your head from side to side. The remainder of the bones are shaped like boxes, and they're separated by discs. At each cervical level, a nerve exits and travels down the upper extremities. If a disc herniates, it will impinge upon the nerve, and this will affect the upper extremity. You can have pain, numbness, tingling, weakness in the arms and hands, along with neck pain. Over time, the disc will crumble, and you will wind up with bone on bone. The nerves exit between the bones, so as the bones approximate each other, the nerves also get impinged. Initially, the surgeon will separate the bones, and this in and of itself helps decompress the nerves. Then the disc herniation, as well as other tissue that's impinging upon the nerves is removed. Something must be placed in the disc space to maintain the normal height and alignment of the bones. If not, the bones will reapproximate and the nerves will get impinged once again. The most common device used today is a peak plastic cage. Further stabilization can be achieved by placing screws through this cage. There is actually no metal bridging from one bone to the next. This is done so as not to place additional stress on the adjacent levels, the discs above and below. The cage is filled with bone graft and stem cells. The screws are recessed into the cage because the esophagus sits in front of the spine and this will help minimize swallowing issues. An alternative older fixation method is the use of a metal plate. The metal plate is more rigid and places more stress on adjacent discs and can lead to breakdown of the adjacent levels. Also, the plate places more bulk behind the esophagus and can lead to swallowing issues. Instead of a fusion, when is an artificial disc indicated? An artificial disc is typically made of two plates separated by a ball joint that is designed to restore motion to the cervical spine. With a disc herniation, you frequently have loss of disc height to the point that there is bone rubbing on bone. This means that the two posterior joints also collapse, damaging their cartilage. An artificial disc would result in increased motion of these painful arthritic joints. An artificial disc only works well with high levels of patient satisfaction when there is no underlying arthritis. Cervical fusions have a very high rate of patient satisfaction with a 96% good to excellent results. With a cervical fusion, you are fusing a level that does not have normal motion. You will not lose significant motion. You may, in fact, feel like you have more motion. With a cervical fusion, the post-op recovery is quick. In most cases, immobilization with a cervical collar is not indicated. You can usually return to work within a few days. Therapy initially consists of engaging in normal activities of daily living and gradually increasing the motion of your neck. No heavy lifting for six to eight weeks. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this informative. Remember to tell your friends and neighbors to watch. Share the video, give us a thumbs up, and subscribe. Thank you.